Hi guys, it's Honey here, and this video is a bit of a serious one. It's quite personal for me, but I think it needs to be said. So I guess trigger warning for mention of panic attacks, um, anxiety attacks, anxiety disorders, agoraphobia, and the Rona. Um, but I mean, you read the title of the video and you clicked it anyway, so I'm assuming that's what you came here for. As someone who lives with an anxiety disorder, this whole quarantine situation has been a very unique blend of heaven and hell. And I guess this is my story, aka an agoraphobe's guide to surviving the apocalypse. All right, let's get started. My first ever panic attack happened when I was in high school and it sent me to urgent care. It was the usual blend of heart palpitations, shortness of breath, hyperventilation, I guess at the same time, uh, dizziness and tremors and numbness. It was just a whole mixed bag and I thought I was dying so I went to the hospital but by the time the doctor got to me the whole thing was already over so I was just sent home with more questions than answers. Shortly after my panic attacks went from that really scary thing that happened at one time to something that I could expect to happen multiple times every single day. And Back then, no one was really talking about mental health or mental illnesses, so I didn't know what was wrong with me. I would go to the doctors and they would run tests on my lungs and my heart and they wouldn't find anything. To them, I was fine, but I wasn't. Naturally, because none of my doctors could come up with a reason as to why this was happening to me, my brain started to form its own conclusions. I tried to gain some sort of control over the situation through avoidance. Avoidance of things that I felt connected with my panic attacks and connected with this horrible feeling that I would feel all the time. And this was when I started developing a mild case of agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is an anxiety disorder where you fear or avoid places or situations that can either lead you to a panic attack or an anxiety attack or it can make you feel helpless or feel like you can't escape. Anxiety is like our first line of defense and agoraphobia is our anxiety trying to keep us safe from itself, trying to keep us safe from fear and panic. Agoraphobia can be expressed really differently for different people, but for me, it was done through avoidance. I would shy away from large gatherings and not go to new places alone. I'd either disconnect or dissociate or distract myself whenever I had to go outside in order to cope with the kind of lingering fear and anxiety that is caused by it. I would have trouble making eye contact with people while I was outside. I would go days without leaving my house. I would avoid lines or queues. I would avoid taking public transportation or going into elevators. I had a lot of fear and anxiety wrapped around what was directly outside. So whenever I heard sounds coming from the hallway or someone knocked on my door, I would have a panic attack or pretend I wasn't home. I was lucky because even through the worst of it, I lived a pretty normal, I know that's an ugly word, but I don't know what else to use, a standard life. I was able to function on a relatively high level and still go to school and still do all the things I needed to do. I have a much better handle on my anxiety now. Of course, I still have my moments. I still have my bad days where some of my agoraphobic tendencies come back and I behave in a disordered manner, but generally I'm doing much better and it's not really holding me back from living and enjoying my life anymore. But of course, you can probably see how safer at home is basically what I was built for as an agoraphobe. Over the years, I have become a master at social distancing and for once, it's actually doing some good for the world instead of just keeping me from living my life. My disordered behavior somehow became society's recommended one. It's kinda nice. It kinda takes the pressure off. I'm able to self-isolate without feeling as guilty. But you see, that comes with a price. Because how I combat my intrusive and anxiety-ridden, anxiety-spirally thoughts is by pushing back 
with reality and logic. I'm able to make myself do all these things that my anxiety tells me not to do by realizing how irrational my anxious voice is. For example, if for instance my anxiety is really high and I might feel the urge to shut the world out and not go to work or not go to school. But I know that I can't do that if I want to get good grades or if I want to not get fired from my job. So in order to get myself out the door and on my way, I kind of have to reason with myself. I have to ask myself questions like, what is it you think is going to happen if you leave the house? Why are you so scared of it? And for instance, if the answer is, I'm scared I'm going to die, or I'm scared I'm going to implode, or I'm scared I'm going to have a panic attack so bad that my heart just stops, I can take a moment and stop and say, hey, you know what, honey, you've left the house every single day this week and you left the house every single day the week before that and you've been doing this your entire life and not once have you ever imploded when you stepped out of the door. Not once have you ever had a panic attack so bad that you die. They all go away after a while and we have all these mechanisms and these things that we can do like grounding exercises or breathing exercises that can make it a little less horrible. So you know what? I think we'll be okay. Most of the time I can use logic and reasoning to get myself out the door. This is really tricky however when now there's no reason to leave. Because of the whole quarantine and the whole Rona situation there aren't as many external forces in place that are pushing me to fight back against those negative and restricting thought patterns. And so my anxiety gets to roam free if I let it. It is extremely hard to maintain my disbelief for all of the wild and scary scenarios that my anxiety has placed in my mind when the world almost seems to reflect it. I never really wanted to leave in the first place and now the world is telling me to stay inside. It is extremely triggering to watch my internal, irrational beliefs almost become other people's external realities. There's a part of me that's really scared that the disordered side of me is just gonna pop its head back up and take over. I'm scared that my anxiety will use this quarantine, will use this time of social distancing as an excuse to hurt myself, to do things that aren't serving good for my life and I'm scared that I'm gonna have trouble reacclimating to the normal world once all of this is over. And I don't think that problem is unique to just agoraphobes and people with anxiety disorders. I feel like a lot of us are also feeling this way. The world has been extremely anxiety ridden lately and if you're feeling scared that is completely understandable, but I just wanted to say that I see you, I feel you, trust me I do, I've been living in this kind of isolating hell for <laughs> the longest time, and I'll be fine, we'll all be fine, but the circumstances that we're in just require that extra amount of work. It requires that extra amount of self-care. It requires that extra amount of self-compassion and compassion for other people. An extra amount of work to try to maintain mental health. This whole thing has been one big exercise in empathy for me and for a whole lot of different people. For the first time, we're getting to experience the same fears and the same precautions that immunocompromised people and people with chronic illnesses have to experience their entire lives. For the first time, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor or you're old or you're young, everyone is going through this and we all have a part that we need to play in order to flatten the curve and in order to be a positive part of society. I know that it is tough right now and I know how incredibly difficult it must be for you. There are so many mental illnesses that people have to live with every day that I didn't even mention in this video. I can't begin to imagine how it feels to be someone with OCD or to be a hypochondriac during this time. I have no clue how tired all the doctors and nurses, how 
scared all the essential workers who still have to go out there every single day, how terrified the people who are immunocompromised or are struggling with some sort of illness must be. But unless we find community during this time, unless we reach out, unless we speak up for people, speak up for ourselves, unless we listen to people, unless we empathize, this whole self-isolation period will really be isolating. We might be physically distant, but we can still be together. It's more important than ever for us to be together right now. For all the people out there who are struggling with their mental health or maybe are living with a mental illness and this whole situation is really making it tough for you, I just wanted to say that we live in our heads. We've done this whole thing a million times. We've gone through every possible catastrophic, horrible scenario in our minds and we've gotten through it all the times before. This one might be one that's happening in reality and that might make it feel so much bigger than all the other times, but I know that we can get through it again. Keep combating those horrible intrusive thoughts with logic, compassion, and reason. As always, this is a safe space, so feel free to tell me your stories, leave me anything that you want to just put out there and say to the world in the comments below, and I'll try to be a listening ear and hopefully a supportive voice. Okay, this video was really heavy, so let's bring it all back. Let's end this video with my favorite grounding exercise. I'm gonna talk you through this, are you ready? Okay, just put the phone down if you're watching me on your phone or if you're on a computer or a TV, just look away from the screen and I want you to take a moment and just look around. Just do a nice scan of your surroundings. And I want you to notice five things that you can see. So either point at the thing or just look at the thing and just name it. Name five things that you can see from where you're sitting, where you're standing in your environment. Good job. Okay, so next, let's bring it back into our body and try to name four things that you can feel. Whether that be the clothes on your skin or your butt on the chair, just anything, just notice your senses and what your body is feeling. All right. So let's take a moment to listen and try to name three things that you can hear. And one of those things, of course, is probably my voice coming through you through your screen. But just take a moment and listen and see what you can hear in your environment. All right. Let's do two things that you can smell. I know this one might be a bit difficult if you feel like you need to get up and go sniff a candle or something you're completely welcome to i do that sometimes aromatherapy is the best but the whole point is to try to take some deep breaths and see what you pick up from those deep breaths all right so you can breathe with me you can breathe by yourself i'm not really good at following breathing exercises so if you're not good at that you know just take it in your own time it's completely okay All right, last thing. Try to find one thing that you can taste in your mouth right now. And if the answer is, honey, what are you talking about? My mouth tastes like nothing, that's perfectly fine too. Usually when I do this exercise alone, I make myself a cup of tea that I can sip while I'm doing it. So I can kind of like hack the system and identify that I'm drinking like chamomile or something like that. But just take a moment, see what you can find. Thank you so much for doing that exercise with me. Please, please, please try to stay home if you can. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. If you have to go outside, be extra careful and extra courteous to all the service industry workers out there who have to braid the wetter to go to work so you can go grocery shopping every day. Please 
treat yourself with that extra level of compassion and treat other people with that extra amount of compassion and love. Thank you so much to all of the essential workers out there who have to brave this storm and go to work every day so that the rest of us can be healthy and be safe and so that we can stay home to try to flatten this curve. You've got this. Whatever your situation is, I don't know you, but I know that you've got this because you've done it before. I believe in you. I love you so very much. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've watched this far, promise me something. Promise me that you'll do that grounding exercise that we did just now at least one other time this week. Just take a moment to be with yourself and be grounded and come back to your body and just check in with yourself. Take care of yourself, okay? All right, I'll see you next time.